now, Mr. Cat. Ah. Another day, another video. I'm going to try to do a video on the Marvel Cinematic Universe today. Because I want to. And you can't stop me. So, I want to do, to do a review, actually, on some of the Marvel movies that have come out in the last eh, year and a half. Specifically the MCU. Uh, so let's clarify that. I don't mean the X-Men. I don't mean uh, Deadpool. I don't mean the last Spider-Man movie that came out. I don't mean... I just mean Marvel Studios, Marvel Cinematic movies. Those specific films. Uh, I started doing this a little too late to get into, to do a review of Marvel, the Civil War movie, Captain America, Civil War. And it's a little too early for, let's see what's coming up next, Doctor Strange. So this is kind of a review of those. Specifically what I'd like to do is do a review of what I think are the best five, what are empirically the best five. Not necessarily my favorites. Although I think, I'm, you know, like I, I don't have any preconceptions there. Of course, the ones on the top five, I'm going to list as the top five, are going to be my favorite movies. But, but mostly the ones I think are empirically the best films. As much as an art form, art and entertainment can be empirical, can be objective. Because a lot of it is subjective. Nonetheless, I'd, I'd like to give a go at this just to get a discussion about it. I collect my thoughts anyway. So let's let's dig in. So phase three. We're in phase three of this. Technically Captain America Civil War is the first movie in phase three of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I would argue Although there seems to be an unusual amount of debate about this, that Captain America Civil War is definitely one of the five best Marvel movies that have come out. One of the best MCU movies. Uh, it's it's well written, it's entertaining. There's some pacing issues, but tonal issues. Let's say that instead. Pacing is fine. Uh, it's a little odd having essentially two climaxes. I don't know what the plural of climax is. So I'm going to use climaxes. So take that. First you have... Well, the movie's been out for months. So spoilers out the wazoo. First you have the airport scene as one sort of climax, and then you have the actual climax at the end of the film. A brilliant film. It gets around... It sidesteps the villain problem that Marvel movies have. MCU movies, and going into that just a smidge, the villain problem is the villains in Marvel movies tend to be one-dimensional and have very weak motivations, paper-thin in some places. Like, I love the Ant-Man movie. Oh, see if that makes the top five. But the villain in it's like, he's crazy because reasons. Like, maybe because of the, he's been exposed to the pim particles but then there's you know actually he hasn't he, as far as we know he hasn't been he it doesn't make sense so a lot of problem with thin motivation I mean, i'm looking at the list of these the the whiplash guy was kind of a weak character i mean he, he hated iron man but meh uh, there's a reason Loki has shown up in three of these so far. You know, a guy who's not one of the heroes has shown up in three of the movie. He was definitely a villain in the first Thor movie in 2000. When is that? 2011. And then again in Avengers, he's the villain again. The series of movies needs a, a good reoccurring villain, and right now it's it's leaning on their Loki, which is fine. He's Tom Hiddleston is is a blast to watch. He's very good at it. But they need more. They really do need more. As I was saying, Civil War kind of worked its way around that. But yes, you have uh, Thunderbolt Ross, who's now, what, the Secretary of State or something like that, as sort of a villain. But in a sense, 
Tony Stark is really the main, one of the main antagonists. He's the one who matters anyway. Yeah, you have Zemo behind the scenes manipulating things, so he's an antagonist too, but the one who's actually in there punching guys and getting uh, other people to punch other people and so on and so forth. It, it's him. It's Tony Stark. And if ever there was a more sympathetic antagonist, it was clearly Tony Stark. So I dug that movie a lot. A full review is worth doing, and I'm not going to do it right now. But I'm going to say that in the top five movies, I'm going to add Captain America Civil War. Because it belongs there. As an aside, I don't think... I don't think the numbered portion of this is relevant. Uh, what, a, what the hell do I mean by that? I don't think Captain America Civil War is number five or number one. I'm just listing it because it's the most recent. I did it first because it's the most recent one. It's hard enough to narrow these down to five. And of what, these are, there are 13 of these out. So it's hard enough to narrow it down to five, let alone put those in some sort of meaningful order. Like, you know, somehow this one's better than that. I'm just listing them off no particular order. Mostly going in order of when did they happen. And kind of going with oh, that. right. Hold on. Okay. Next. Uh, top five. Top five. I'm not going to list... Avengers Age of Ultron is one of the top five movies, because I'm kind of going working my way backwards through them. Nor am I going to list who's off the list. That actually makes this a little easier. Iron Man, I'd argue, the original 2008 would be in a list of the top five most important films, but not the best. I mean, it's great, it's very entertaining, and it holds up. Robert Downey Jr.'s performance is fantastic. Everyone's performance was fantastic in that film. I can't think of anyone who stands out as not being as good as everyone else. It was a unique, it was a, it was a risk. It was a huge gamble from every perspective. People forget now that once upon a time, I mean, you can imagine the, the water cooler situation or, or people getting into an elevator over at Sony Pictures or... Warner Brothers go, Pfft, did you hear the news? Marvel is going to try to make their own movie theater, movie studio. Yeah, they, those are the guys who did the you know live-action Incredible Hulk on the made-for-TV movies. Yeah, they're going to make real movies. And they got Robert Downey Jr., who in, in 2008, mind you, was this guy who's trying to recover. It was a washed-up actor trying to recover. He was not the guaranteed crowd-pleaser he is today. Like, his career is just a crazy up-and-down line up to that point. Like, at some point he was fantastic, he had some very lows, like, I know he had some sort of personal problems, uh, drugs, alcohol, you know, substance abuse, things like that. And in 2008, he was a gamble. Everything at this point was a gamble. So, Iron Man definitely one of the most important films, but not the best Ditto, same year, uh, The Incredible Hulk. I really liked it. I liked it a lot, actually. I liked it more than most people. It was definitely... It was a reboot of uh, the Ang Lee one, which is vastly superior to that one. And that's a shame. Uh, had some issues, but not a bad film. A pretty, pretty... Likewise, Thor and Marvel's The Avengers. Uh, those were... Those are great films. Once again, Marvel, The Avengers, was an important film. List of the I should do a separate list of the most important ones, but I don't think they're empirically the best, and not because they aren't good. I like Thor. It more than anything else, it demonstrated why this character can be cool. What can be cool about a character that I honestly didn't care that much about till this movie came out. Captain America, the first Avenger, though, that's a close one, because that is so good. It's really good. As a historical fantasy, it's well-driven. It doesn't rely on a lot of... a lot of the superhero tropes of... of visually destroying 
everything. And unfortunately, yeah, as much as I like the Avengers movies in particular, they fall into the, you know, Batman v Super... the... the, oh, what is his name? Uh, the director of Batman v Superman, Snyder. They fall into the, the, destru the destruction porn. Michael Bay destruction porn. Both of the Avengers movies... Uh, to some extent, The Incredible Hulk, although, eh, there's the scene at the end, so yeah. Uh, my point is, Captain America, the first Avenger, while it is a threat to the world, where the world is going to be blown up, we don't actually see it being actively blown up. The whole thing, the end of it, the climax of that movie from 2011, takes place on the, the big flying wing. I mean, we we see that thing again getting beaten up and blown up and all sorts of carnage, but not in the same way. We don't see a major metropolitan area being blown to smithereens. Very contained, all things considered, but still visually stunning and story-wise very good. I liked all the characters. I liked Peggy Carter. She was a, a fully rounded, developed character. Uh, ditto the general. Uh, you know, he has his doubts about Steve Rogers, Steve Rogers' friend. I mean, like, everyone's a, everyone's a character. Everyone has an arc. Everyone goes from point A to point B. Uh, Steve Rogers starts as... And, and that's what's so great about that story, the first Avenger, is that while the character develops, it's more the situation around him. We see him being truly heroic and brave when he's powerless. Like, he's constantly trying to get killed in a war, not because he wants, and he, that's very explicitly spelled out, not because he wants to kill a bunch of Nazis, but because he wants, he feels he has the need to serve. Like, he really he believes that this country's in danger and that he needs to help. He needs to help somehow. And he feels this is the best way to do it is to enlist. Even if it's a relatively minor role, he really wants to do it. And you see him, like, like standing up for himself, and that's that's Echo. And the the two movies so far I've listed as the best, empirically the best. He has the same line, you know. I could do this all day, you know, where he's getting beaten up by someone physically more powerful than himself. Awesome. It demonstrates what's. It does a very good job of demonstrating what's cool about that character. And I need to go into that just a little bit. That has to be explained. Ugh, all right. Why is it important to demonstrate why your main character is cool? That should be a, well, duh. But it isn't, apparently. Did you see Batman v Superman? Did you see Man of Steel? The characters are cool, or... God, I don't even have to limit it to DC. I can go to... Oh, what's another good one? The last Spider-Man film. I like the Peter Parker guy. Uh, what was his name? Andrew Garfield. I like the actor, but... Characters aren't cool simply because you declared them to be cool, or someone on screen tells me they're cool. They're cool because I see them being cool. Their, their actions and words tell, dictate that, not... Like, this is like... Oh my god, Superman is such a great example for these. Because we're constantly beaten over the head with how heroic Superman is, but we don't really see him being ro heroic. We see him being powerful, and that's not the same. Now, is it? Yes, he's very powerful, but we never have him, I need to do this, or, or you know, even if you're going to do the, the trying to do a gritty, grim, uh, introspective... Superman. Fine, that gives you a great opportunity to have a have him talk to someone about why he's Superman, and as near as I can tell, that doesn't really happen. So failure. Captain America, we see six ways to Sunday. This guy is awesome, and he explains why. He demonstrates why, when he's powerless and vulnerable. <laughs> He's, he's standing up to bullies and bad guys for something that he believes that other people around him don't. That is, that is the core of what makes Captain America Captain America. 
uh, you know, Steve Rogers, Captain America. Not just why he's cool, why we like him, or what he can do. This is why he is what he is. This is a demonstration of character, and a strong one in both of these movies. So that's why those two are in there. The very strong characters, and oh my God, Civil War introduced so many wonderful characters too. God, it was amazing. So I have to put Civil War, and I have to put Captain America, the first Avenger, as one of the top five. I have to. But man, that gives me a, a hell of a challenge there, because now I have to winnow out three out of what's left. And that's a tricky one. That's a damn tricky one. Okay, discarding them seems to be more helpful. So let's throw out Thor of the Dark World. I like the th like I said I like the Thor character I I think he's underappreciated, but neither of his movies are in the top five. Uh, there's thirteen movies. They're in the top ten. One of them is probably I don't know. It's only thirteen, so that's not that great. But neither's in the top five. Uh, we're introduced to Loki, and that's awesome. That's balls awesome. But we have a better introduction of Loki in the Avengers movie, the Marvel's The Avengers. So I gotta throw that one out. I gotta throw out Age of Ultron too. And that one's a little easier to throw out because it was crowded and it didn't have enough time. And I should go explain that a little bit. Crowded, it's crowded. So is Civil War. Civil War is more crowded, but does a better job. I mean, every single character got their five, got their moment to shine, got their dialogue, got their, you know, this is why this guy is cool, this is why this guy is this guy, or gal, in the case, in quite a few cases. But it didn't, didn't feel rushed. Age of Ultron, we have this entire love story arc with Black Widow and uh, Bruce Banner. That feels way, f way rushed and forced, and there's not enough time for it in a movie, and there's not enough setup, and we have all these other things, and it's like, oh, it's not a bad film. It's a good film, and I love it, but not in the top five. Sorry. It can't be. So I got three. I got three. I'm going to say Iron Man 3. I heard someone saying recently that, oh, the big letdown of Iron Man 3. And I'm like, are you nuts? Iron Man 3 is almost a perfect movie. Uh, let's explain that briefly. It's the character undergoes a significant, interesting, complex arc. It's mostly about the main character. All the other characters are developed. The motivations for all the villains are are crystal clear. Uh, Doctor, what's her name? Wants to develop this technology. <coughs> um, uh, the main guy, uh, the main villain there, he wants to uh, basically control the world in a quite a brilliant way. Uh, the Mandarin turned out to be like turned out to be a stooge, he doesn't, didn't want to be killed, and he wanted to get paid, and he has all these luxuries. So everyone's motivation is, is absolutely clear. Why is everyone doing this? Well, they're, they're doing this for, for clear reasons, not just because. The setup is perfect. Execution is perfect. One complaint was, one legitimate complaint was that it, it was too toy-oriented, too many too many suits. Too many suits operating themselves, just so we could show off all these things that we're going to make into toys. That's not an illegitimate complaint. But, and I have to add a big old but, understand one of the underlying themes set up very early in this film is that Tony Stark is making suits compulsively as a way of working through his post-traumatic stress disorder. So he's, you know, early on he's like, oh yeah, this is like number 13 or something. He's looking on the thing, Mark 42. Like he's making them compulsively. So there's a setup as to why they're all there, why he has so many goddamn suits. He's just building on, you know, constructing them, deconstructing, and whatever. And when a whole bunch of them show up, when I think a dozen of them or so show up, 
he had over 40 of them. You know? So having a dozen survive the the missile thing at the in the first place, you know, these are just the ones that survive and then he has in working order. He had more suits. He had more. Maybe way more. That's set up very well. Well, why did he destroy them all at the end? That seemed like a silly over-the-top... No, he did. I thought that was very clear. It was... The whole point was... The whole point was... These suits are an extension of his neuroses. That is very clearly stated in the film. It's very clearly demonstrated in the film. He's doing these compulsively. The whole point is, at the end, uh, Killian, Adrian Killian, or whatever his name is, is defeated. And that Tony Stark has defeated his neuroses. The suits are an extension, a physical representative of his neuroses. He's better. Maybe not all better, but better enough that he can get rid of them now. He doesn't need them anymore. He can build more. He says that at the end. I am an, you know, I'm an engineer. I make things. I fix things. I'll make more. I don't... He's building them because he feels he needs them. He needs more protection and more protection, and then he's free. He has freed himself at the end, truly free. And he's not just freeing them for his own sake, although he is, but he's also doing it to demonstrate to Pepper Potts. His neuroses has put a wedge between him and her, and it's like, look, Pepper, I'm blowing them all up. Fuck them. I don't need them. I can build more. I'm me. I'm better enough. I, I am getting over this. I've gotten over this enough. I can let go. That's something he's demonstrating to her and to himself, and I guess to some extent his friends in the world. So I'm perfectly fine with the firework thing that happens at the end also. It's a little over the top, but it's set up, it is explained, it has a purpose, it has meaning. So I'm perfectly fine with that. So great. So our number three movie, Iron Man 3. There we go. So that leaves me with two more. Oh, God, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. With a window open. <clears throat> well, not open, open. I'm not crazy. But no, I have shades up. There's natural light in here. I have almost a human like skin tone. It's madness. Uh, let's see, where were we? So. I gotta pick two more, and there's three really good ones left. Ah, arr. Oh, this is so tough. This is so. This is tough. I like doing this. This is good. This was a good idea. Okay. Oh, man, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Captain America: Winter Soldier and Ant-Man are really good, so are Guardians of the Galaxy. Is one of them good enough to kick the other out? And it's tough. It's real tough. Captain America Winter Soldier was amazing. I mean, it was just simply amazing. It was a political thriller with the trappings of a superhero film. That's awesome. We even had Robert Redford in it. It was, it was, holy shit, amazing. It was just fantastic. Once again, you had a lot of characters who weren't Captain America, the main character, who are fully realized, fully developed. They're not just window dressing. They are real characters, have a real, real impact on the script and the setting and, and events. Amazing stuff. Amazing, so it's really hard to kick that out. But at the same time, the other two, Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant Man, are are awesome. Damn, that is really tough. That is really tough. Civil War has given me, <laughs> has put me in a conundrum here. Oh, what to do? <sighs> well, let's go through. Guardians of the Galaxy was groundbreaking. You know what? I I get it. I know what to do. I know how to how to make this right. Okay, so let's go. Best five. 
Captain America Civil War, no questions asked. It is the evolution of the entire storyline and the characters up to this point, the introduction of several very cool new characters, uh, Black Panther, who is fantastic, Spider-Man, who was amazing for every second he was on screen. Uh, we also saw, uh, what's his face, Paul Rudd, the, uh, the new Ant-Man. We also saw that character outside of his previous environment of his standalone film next to other superheroes. Awesome. We needed to see that. I wanted to see that. That was great. So that one's definitely in. Iron Man 3 is in, so that's two. I'm going to say Captain America Winter Soldier is so good, it kicks Captain America the first Avenger off the list. Because the other stuff has to be there, and that film has to be there. That was too good. It was a serious film. It's what if superheroes were real? That sort of that sort of genre of film. And it does a very good job of it. It's not perfect. It's not by no means is it like uh, the Dark Knight. Very very grim and serious. It is a more much more serious film as far as Marvel movies go. More so than a lot of these other ones. In fact, Iron Man 3 Here's my own preferences. Dark and grim. Iron Man 3, Captain America, Winter Soldier are definitely grim and gritty films. Definitely. I mean, Iron Man 3 was a look into one man's neuroses and personal suffering and coping. <laughs> my superhero comic book film. And Captain America, Winter Soldier is like, how can the government go wrong? Uh, demonstrated very clearly. So those two stay in, and Civil War was amazing with those two characters. Guardians of the Galaxy can't get kicked off the list. It's too good. It's it's interesting, and it's complete diversion. It's its own new path for the these movies. Once again, I'd argue that's on the list of the most the five most important ones. And because it's it took. I mean, as if I can't recall a single regular Marvel character. Someone who's appeared in one of these other, you know, 12 films appearing in it. So it's completely off the beaten path. It's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's no real connection to anything in other, to any of the other films. And it uses extremely obscure characters. I knew the backstory of Rocket Raccoon. In fact, people not familiar with the comics, I know more about Rocket Raccoon than you do. It is a crazy ass story. I don't know much about Groot or uh, Gamora, or for that matter, Starler. I know more about Rocket Raccoon than the rest. But still, these are all extremely obscure characters, and they didn't need to be. Just because you have well known characters doesn't make the movie good. Batman v Superman comes up a lot in conversation today, doesn't it? Um, also, James Gunn's amazing. I love his stuff. He's, he made one of my favorite movies ever, which was the specials, and then he's he was the writer and, as it turns out, one of the actors. Funny story about that. I'm not going to recount it here, though. Perhaps later. But he was the, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, and that was great. And he was great in it, so as the director, he just did a fantastic job. So that has to stay. Ant-Man was a... Ant-Man... Ant-Man has to stick around, too. So there's number five, Ant-Man. Ant-Man is number five because Ant-Man is somewhere between Guardians of the Galaxy in tone, and at the same time it has way more connections to the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Tony Stark's father, uh, Peggy Carter, uh, you know, there's a mention of the, of the, the, the Starks family, Winter's coming. Uh, it's better connected and better placed. And once again, I mean, I keep harping on this. One of the things that makes Marvel MCU movies great is they aren't pure comic book movies. They aren't, let's make a funny comic book movie. It's, let's make a good movie that happens to have the... Tr it has to have an idea other than here's a bunch of superheroes. Here's a bunch of superheroes doing superhero-y stuff. 
Ant-Man in particular is a fantastic example. Captain America Winter Soldier is another. Ant-Man is a heist movie. It is a full-on heist movie. And it's a great heist movie. If somehow you were able to take all the themes and all this, rewrite and re-edit it so it was just a heist movie minus the, the Ant-Man, the shrinking stuff, it would still be a good movie. It would be a very different film, but it would still be a good heist movie. But adding a good, good, let me emphasize this, good heist movie married to a superhero film and placed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this shit's amazing. No way I'm going to kick that off the top five list. <sighs> oh, this is going to get tough if I do this again. Because look at all the stuff coming out. Ugh. But yeah, so yeah, so that's why those are in there because they're they are what they are, and what they are is pretty fucking great. Okay, just a quick recap. Uh, let's see, my I would argue the five best Marvel movies, Marvel MCU movies. Let's be clear, were in reverse order of when they appeared: Civil War, Captain America: Civil War. Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America Winter Soldier, and Iron Man 3. Top 5. A note on that, worth mentioning, I think one of the cool things about MCU movies, why they've been so freaking great, is that they took a very good movie, which was Iron Man. They took a chance on a movie and backed it, really backed it. Like, didn't back off. There wasn't a ton of studio interference I have seen with any of these or heard from any of these. From what I understand, they got a director. They they clarified beforehand what they wanted out of the director, what they wanted out of the film, and so on. And if it didn't work out, they, get the, they didn't do it. Ant-Man is an example of that. The, they changed directors on that. Not a slight to the previous director, whose name eludes me, because I'm terrible with names. Uh, let's see. Development. But yeah, there was... Wright's replacement. Edgar Wright, I think, was the original guy. Right, left the project. Okay. Citing creating differences. Okay, that's fine. In other words, before they made the film, they made decisions. They didn't make them during or after. No course corrections until... They, no course corrections. Like, we're going to get this right the first time. It's going to fit in with everything else we're doing, and it's going to work. And we're going to stick to it. It's bold, and that's the way they've done it. In a bold, organized Centri I mean, in, it's what's his name, Kevin Feige. They have one person calling the shots. There isn't squabbling or infighting that we know about. I mean, hell, for all we know, behind the scenes there might be, but there's no reason to. <clears throat> there aren't all these guys involved. There's, like, look, you put Kevin Feige in charge. He's in charge. He's the, the man calling the shots for this. He's doing a great job. He did a great job up to now, which gives him the the leverage to make decisions. I mean, it's not just that he was given the power to do so, but he's demonstrated that he's used that power very well. Kick ass. Um, my point being, uh, getting off track as I always do, with these films, they started with a good idea, Iron Man. They tried out uh, the Hulk. The Hulk movie didn't work out as well as they'd hoped, but it was still good enough. It allowed them to continue onward. And after that, they built on it. The films built. They didn't just try to recreate the first Iron Man with different characters. Or, hey, let's get a uh, sass-talking guy to be the main guy. And then, but we'll just do it with other characters. No, it's they've tried to do something different. Like I said, this—I mean, God, looking at these, 
Guardians of the Galaxy, kind of a space opera. Captain America, Winter Soldier, uh, political thriller. Ant-Man, heist movie. Uh, Ultron, um, uh, robot apocalypse. Avengers, alien apocalypse. Uh, Thor the Dark World and Thor, uh, fantasy types, type very fantasy oriented. Captain America, First Avenger, historical fantasy. Historical sci-fi fantasy. Uh, Iron Man is the mm, the most comic booky. Even the Incredible Hulk. I can't just call it a pure comic book movie, although it's a purer one. The ones that are pure comic book, I can't help noticing, aren't the ones that are kind of weaker. But it's they've made a good movie with comic book stuff with their characters. They've made something else out of their ingredients. Awesome. But they've built towards them. Uh, in my list of the top five, the ones I felt were the best, I mean, these are... They're two... In my list of the top five, four of them are the most recent films. In fact, I think the... F out of the five most recent films, aside from Age of Ultron, I mean, I'm... That's amazing. That's, that's a wonderful progression. That's that's and that's how they need to do it, or else people are going to get sick of superhero films, or going to get fatigue, or something like that. I think people keep talking about it. Is that you have to keep making them better? And I have no problem with that. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah. So they're just going to have to keep making these films better and better. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that works for me. Just keep up the good work. Because what's next in the pipe is... What is next in the pipe? Doctor Strange, one of my favorite characters. I am so eager to see what they do with this character. Guardians of the Galaxy. I loved Guardians of the Galaxy. I loved James Gunn. Now he's going to get to do a second film. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, Spider-Man. The Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man was amazing. That was the best Spider-Man I've ever seen. And I don't like saying that, because I really liked Andrew Garfield. And not to, to diss Tobey Maguire either. I haven't seen a shitty Spider-Man yet. But Holland was so good. He was so good in that character. The writing was perfect for him. The acting was perfect. It was, it's a take that's different than the last two Spider-Men. But it was awesome. It was really awesome. So Homecoming looks great. Ragnarok, I'm sure, will be fine. Loki's going to be in it. I think uh, Anthony Hopkins is going to be in it. It's shit. That'll be amazing. Even if it's not one of the best films of that year. And God, they're doing three next year. They always do two. And the year after that. Interesting. Then Black Panther the year after that. Because the Black Panther was just amazing in this in uh, Civil War, he was really, really good. He was important, relevant. Once again, underwent a serious arc where he went from, "I don't want anything to do with politics. It's not my bag." Oh look, I'm the king of a country now, and I crave vengeance. Ah, I'm craving vengeance, and I'm fighting for it, and I'm making, associating myself with other characters and other people and, and shit like this and I'm making deals and stuff like that so I'm I'm changing who I am to adapt to the situation oh maybe this vengeance thing isn't all it's cracked up to be oh this is awful I'm not going to allow myself to be consumed by vengeance I'm going to complex beautiful story arc beautiful developmental arc for the character wonderful I am if they can they can just maintain maintain what they've done in that movie with that character in the Civil War movie and make an entire movie around it. Just maintain it would be great. If they can actually go somewhere new that movie will be fucking amazing. Anyway, that's that's where I am. Just wanted to, because I haven't done anything in a couple days. And this sounded like fun. I, I wanted to review the last three super... three really good... Oh, shit. We had three really good superhero films this year. We had a bunch of superhero films this year. Not all of them were that great. But, I wanted to review them, but it's been a little late for me. Maybe I'll see them again and review them. 
I actually tried to do the Fantastic Four movie and I can't get through it. I literally can't make myself watch it. It's slow, 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 boring, and I know that the payoff isn't going to be great. So I did this instead. We'll see how that works. Um, please like and subscribe. I'm here, and if enough people pay attention to me, I'll keep doing this. <laughs> and that's not just a, an idle threat. All right, uh, I'm done. I'm out.